Welcome to The Note, I'm Ashley. I'm Brian. And before we send you guys off to a weekend full of video games, there is a new report going around that Xbox is planning to announce an all access subscription service, potentially as soon as later this month, that includes not only access to all of their online services like Game Pass, uh, Xbox Live, but also throws in a console. So we wanna take a minute to talk about that. Um, as for, their, it's, it's kind of weird timing. Yeah. Because it, you'd think they would have announced it at Gamescom? Right. Didn't they? There's just been a huge event. Maybe they want to do it on their own thing, have their own big announcement? Well, supposedly the reason they didn't announce at Gamescom is because this is going to launch initially as a U.S. service. That's right. Okay. So, in, on, on Wouldn't make sense front, to do it in Germany. Right. <laughs> like, maybe not quite the target. <laughs> hey, here's this new thing that you guys ain't getting. Uh, but PAX is coming up as well. Oh, okay. Maybe they'll make an announcement yes. then, or maybe they'll just make an announcement because hey you don't have to do everything at events these days they could put out a video or just yeah stream their own event people yeah what people would watch yeah but uh this is regardless of when they officially announce it uh this is coming courtesy windows central they have a lot of previous very accurate oh, yeah. leaks um upcoming announcements they have all kinds of ears inside they microsoft good sources. So they're yeah. very credible and this seems as well very much in line with Xbox's recent strategy. Yeah, th they've been pushing a lot of different things. Uh, backwards compatibility, Game Pass. Uh, they, they have not talked about hardware numbers forever. We know they're probably... <laughs> Part of the reason being that... because they're not number they're, one. Yeah, exactly. Last generation, they loved talking about the hardware numbers, <laughs> at least in the U.S., where they were on top with NPD right. month after month after month. And so they loved to talk about them. And then they did go quiet this generation when it became clear early Suspicious. on that they were falling behind. Right. But that said, there's also been a big shift in Xbox's strategy during this last few years as well. And a lot of that is down to Phil Spencer. I think they've done a smart thing though. They have focused on the positives and tried to downplay stuff like stuff that they aren't strong in. So they they he repeatedly hits on uh, Xbox Live numbers, user engagement, keeping people in their ecosystem. It, he'll still throw out big numbers, but it has to do with you know their overall players and yeah, like Sea of Thieves like has that. millions of players. Right. Who knows how many people bought the game and how many are doing it via Game Pass, but. Here's the thing, if they're doing it via Game Pass, they're still in their ecosystem. Yes. They're still engaging. Yes. He'll um, say like millions of people booted up Sea of Thieves one time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, you know, and it, it, this strikes me almost as Xbox starting to pull a Nintendo. Uh, not to say that they are uh, going to go off and create a hybrid console, nothing like no, that. No. But one thing that's always been unique about Nintendo in the console ecosystem is that instead of just playing the escalating hardware right. war and who can make the more powerful console, right. they focus almost exclusively, sometimes to the detriment of performance, like in the case of the Wii, mm -hmm. on a unique experience right. and on sort of going their own way, doing their own thing and building their own appeal. Yeah, this feels like them, meaning Microsoft and Xbox, maybe trying to get a jump start on the future a little bit because we've been hearing forever that the future is going to be, uh, you know, maybe more of a subscription model, more of a streaming thing. Not that these are streaming devices, but that they're reducing focus on generations. Yes, yes. I, I they've said repeatedly that they don't care what you play it on as long as you play. You know, if if it's on PC, if it's on an Xbox, as long as you're in their ecosystem, as long as they've got you in their in their world. Remember, it was just recently as well. They have been pushing really hard on crossplay as well, and they yeah. actually teamed up with Nintendo right. Right. to take a jab at PlayStation essentially right. by showing people on Nintendo Switch mm -hmm. um, and on uh, Xbox playing together, playing Minecraft together with with the crossplay features. So yeah, I think I think you're right. They just want to know that you're engaging with their properties, with their ecosystem, and they figured that that way they will sort of pull you in a little like a. Uh, not Venus flytrap, but there's another carnivorous plant that, that has just teeth that keep pulling you in further and further and further. The pit of Sarlacc in Return of the Jedi? You know That's what? what that think. as well. That might actually be what I'm thinking of. But even like, you know, Minecraft, they own Minecraft. So like on some level, do they even care if you're playing it on the Switch? I mean, you're still, they're still seeing that money. Yeah, you know, you're, you're still engaging it. with their property. It feels like they're taking a broad view and, and 
it, it seems like what their rationale is, we've got all these players who play our stuff. Maybe it's 360, maybe it's on Game Pass, maybe it's on Windows, but I, I don't think they... I don't think they care so much if it's tied to one piece of hardware. And so that's why I think where this subscription model is interesting. And I, it, to me, it's almost like a throwback back when you would rent a console from like Blockbuster. And I, I don't know if people rent games. As, I mean, there's Gamefly and stuff like that. But we used to always go and rent, you know, a, a Super Nintendo game for the weekend try it out, and this just seems like part of that. Yeah, well, and it seems like the things like Game Pass, that sort of subscription mm -hmm. service, is sort of the evolution of what a yes. lot of people are thinking of when they think of rentals. Like, I don't need to own it, I just need access to it. So Game yeah. Pass, you can rent stuff, and then with this, you are also, you're not exactly renting the console, it's almost like installment plans, mm -hmm. like they're subsidizing it like a mobile phone. Or something. That's exactly what it's like. Right, yes. where uh, you pay you pay a, a monthly price, and, and right now it's looking like that's going to be thirty five dollars per month over a two year period. Um, it comes with an Xbox One X, and then there's a cheaper plan that includes an Xbox One S, and that's twenty two per month. And then that includes uh, it includes uh, obviously access to backwards compatibility, Game Pass, Xbox Live. So they really want to get you in and across their ecosystem. I, I Yeah, I don't I don't know if those numbers are quite firm yet, but I, I do think whatever it shakes out to be, that's that's a lot less of an investment. I mean, because people can probably swing maybe 30, 25 bucks a month rather than dropping, you know, 500 bucks for an Xbox One X, uh, peripherals, you know, all the other memory cards, all the other stuff you need. I, I don't know, and, and I think you get I don't know if that includes new releases. I mean, I don't know how the Game Pass will well, work. Well, for but. it includes new releases for Xbox's first-party stuff. So okay. uh, earlier this year, Xbox did announce that all of their first-party games will be releasing um, day and date okay. on Xbox Game Pass. Okay. That's one of the ways that they're really trying to get people into it is by right. using their first-party right. library. So this will then get you access to all of those games on launch day. But not you get like, access to online multiplayer. But you wouldn't get like a Red Dead Redemption 2 right off no, the bat. Okay. No, it, it so, wouldn't include the third party stuff. Well, and this kind of makes sense then why they're beefing up and, and buying all these studios then. And they're, you know, how they're, um, uh, I forget their names now, but like uh, they brought, bought Ninja Theory, they bought a, a bunch of others. So maybe they're trying to increase that first party output, which they need to do, but I think that would make Game Pass a lot more attractive. Absolutely, they just you need know. to have more of those kinds games. of games on there. Yeah. And mm -hmm. if you do something like this, where it's a reliable set cost every month, not right. gonna, like 22, 35, probably not gonna break the bank. That's actually, no. that's less expensive if you were to break it out than to buy a console, an Xbox Live Gold subscription, right. and Game Pass over that same period. And we think you get to keep the console at the end yeah, of it. Yeah, at the which, end, you pay it off. Yeah. I, well, I, again, this is, uh, we'll see the specific details and how they shake out when Microsoft does their official announcement, but that is very much what it's sounding like, is like at the end of your, mm -hmm. you know, your, your phone contract, you pay it off, and then, hey, you've got your phone. This also might be a play at parents because I this might be a more attractive uh, sell to them. Hey, twenty bucks a month, your well, kid can play all the games conscious. they want. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Like Rather than having to buy, you, I mean, gaming's expensive. It like, is. It is exp like a sixty dollar game. You know, every single time. And if I'm honest, if I look at my library. Most of those I don't need to own long term. And see, this is a shift. Yeah. So there's something about. I don't know about you, but for me as a gamer, I'm used to owning my things. Me too. And I have me made too. a switch to digital where uh, initially I was very much a physical collector. Mm -hmm. I liked having my shelf that was there. I kept my game boxes just because I liked oh, having I yeah. all of my stuff and then having it there at a glance. And I have largely shifted to digital, but I've still bought most of the games because it's just easy. But we're also seeing a shift in pretty much every other form of entertainment away from owning being the yes. focus and towards streaming and rentals being the focus. It's yes. happened with music was really the first one oh, that that yeah. went wide with, uh, right. but we're seeing it with television, with movies. It's easy to just be like, all right, well, I'll just whatever, I'll wa wait for, you know, Thor will come to Netflix and then that's fine. And so we're used to mm -hmm. not necessarily owning things yeah, I don't, anymore. I don't need to own Infinity War, but if I can watch it somewhere, like I'm, at most I might watch, I don't know, if I watch it two or three times, I feel like I'll get the same bang for my buck. 
Whereas if I bought a $20 DVD, which is what you would have done 10 years ago. And yeah, with music, I was a huge music person. I, you know, collected CDs, you know, proudly displayed them. But like Spotify showed me, I don't care as much as I thought about like the physical copies because I can get most of that on Spotify. Right. Not all of it. And I'll occasionally buy something, but then usually it's digital. Gaming is definitely, I mean, our digital sales, I mean, they're a majority now, right? Like quite a, quite it, a large It depends majority. on the region. Yeah, Different yeah. regions based on how good your internet is. Like that's the really big thing. Right. If a game is going to take days to download on your connection or if you have data caps where yeah. you can't download more than a certain amount per month, games are getting big yeah and so that may not be tenable for a lot of people which is why there is still a physical market well that and people who also like to resell yeah that's true you can get some of your money back i the thing i like about digital is i like being able to switch between games very quickly like i'll play 30 minutes of something then okay what else rather than and I know you don't want to get up you don't want to change so, that disc. it's so lazy but yeah they're so like oh i gotta <laughs> change the cards so who has this kind of time but I also don't feel like I own a digital copy the same way I own a physical. No, that's very true. But this does seem like it's the direction that uh, oh, Microsoft yeah. and Xbox is growing in. They're trying to build this sort of ecosystem. You're like whether you're playing it on PC or yeah. Switch or whether you're playing it on Xbox, if you want, uh, say we launch a new generation of hardware and you had all these games, you no longer have to keep the Xbox 360 to play them they all, they now, everything is starting to fold up and they're really working on making it so that uh, if you've got a game or you've got a service, you can play it in multiple places and mm -hmm. you can have access, one, to your own library from from newer platforms, which right. I think is really great. I don't think Xbox Game, uh, not Game Pass, uh, backwards compatibility gets enough credit. That's, I think it's, it's really the awesome. smartest thing they've done this generation. I think it's it's been maybe the best part about the Xbox One. Is you it's can... just a hard sell because you're like, hey, you can play your old games. Right. And that's <laughs> right. a, an easy thing to make fun of when they're currently lacking a strong first party lineup. True. But oh, it is still yeah. a really nice perk. It is. And I kind of missed out on the 360. I didn't own one. So it has been nice to go back and play some of those games that I didn't see. So yeah, I, I think they have a lot of work to do on the on the the first party end everybody knows that that's not that's no secret but I, this feels like kind of a logical extension and you know if it works great then they found something that works but if not it's not is it really that much of an investment on their end either i mean i sure i think you could i think if this fails it's not a disaster the way like a console failing could be right and i think that this is a way for them to try to shore up their yes. physical console yes. install base in a way that is one easily affordable for a lot of people you know i mean that's like i i have dropped more than that on a meal yeah on a on a fairly oh. i mean you know not like daily but fairly regular <laughs> basis uh and so being a, you like this is my yeah. you know entire month of access to everything that xbox has got to offer right that is you know that makes it a much easier sell for a lot of people especially people on a budget so if they can get yes. more consoles yes. into homes then that also starts to win the support of more developers uh particularly you know indie developers uh, new, That's it true. gives them more more bargaining power, negotiating for exclusives potentially, and they're able to get that install base back in the yes. home. Yes, yeah. And yep. is it really? It's going to be initially a, a financial investment on Microsoft's part because they are taking the upfront investment for the console hardware and planning on getting it back over a period of several years. But I think companies like Apple have shown us that that tends to work out okay. I, I also think that companies would probably prefer a, a steady monthly stream of income rather than sort of peaks and valleys. I mean, that's why, like, Jim sell memberships. That's why, like, Apple, like you said. I mean, I think because they can depend on that. And if you're locked into a, you know, two-year contract, they know exactly how much they're going to get out of you for the next two years um, I do think it's good to get their install base up because they need that because then they can start getting maybe exclusives. I don't know because like with Insomniac and Spider-Man, there was no chance they would develop that for the Xbox One, like an exclusive. No, I, I, I mean that's like, a, that is 100% like PlayStation exclusive. Sony that is, is publishing yeah, that one. Right. But this does raise one other interesting question that I think Microsoft will need to say something about at some point. Uh, probably not at launch where they're trying to 
make everything right. very exciting. Right. But I will be interested to know what happens when they do start looking at releasing new hardware. There are reports saying that yeah. 2020, maybe next generation of Xbox hardware. Right. So while, sure, things like a Game Pass and backwards compatibility can help your software to move forward, I'll be curious to see what they're going to do about potentially trading your hardware forward as well. Do you complete, like, are you, let's say you get this, you sign up for all access in 2019. You're a year through your contract and bam, they drop the, yes. you know, the, the 720 right. or the, you know, whatever the next right. Xbox ends up being, the Infinity, let's say. And now are, are you... Are you going to feel fucked as somebody Yeah, what who, are you going to yeah. do for that next year? Do you have the option to then maybe pay extra and swap for new hardware right. or how is that going to be right. handled? So again, I don't think that they necessarily need to address that until they actually announce the new hardware, but at some point that will become a question. And you're right. This generation is getting a little long in the tooth. I mean, we're starting to see the end like over the horizon. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't, I wonder if their new one will be that much powerful than the one X. It seems like that Xbox one X will be able to handle a lot of shit for the, a while. Yeah, it's but, currently mean, the most powerful. Yeah. I think it's going to be fine for a couple of years, right. but that race never ends, and yeah. that's why yeah. they've had trouble right. with PlayStation. Uh, right. But I'm, I'm interested to see uh, what happens with the overall response when they make their official announcement. Um, I, I already own yeah. an Xbox, so it's not going to do too much for me, but right. I'll be curious to see what it does for the overall ecosystem. I, I wonder, yeah, especially because it's not like they can really point to one game as like a system seller. You know, like right. you want us for Spider-Man. You want us for this game. They don't have that. It's more of bulk. They're kind of selling in right. quantity. Like sure. you can get hundred, uh, you know, over a hundred games and it's a great deal, which I, I don't think is a bad sell, but it'll be interesting to see if that works. Absolutely. So let us know if... Xbox All Access, if a subscription service that includes an actual Xbox, a, uh, a subscription to Game Pass, and an Xbox Live Gold subscription, if something like that for a monthly fee of like 20 or 30 bucks a month is something that appeals to you, if you have held off on getting an Xbox this generation, but if something like that might put you over the hump and get you interested, be or tempting. if yeah. this sort of thing just not for you. That's also totally fine. But let us know in the comments uh, to make sure you get all of the different news and video game discussions and all kinds of other coverage and previews and reviews and overviews and other kinds of views uh, that of we news. have to offer. Make sure that you subscribe to us here on YouTube. You can visit our website, thenode.tv, and make sure that you like this video as well. There's a whole range of things to do. A lot, a lot of lists. Big checklist. It's an ecosystem. Yeah.